Hello folks, welcome to our channel. We have been seeing the AWS DevOps series and in that we are going to see ECR which is EC2 Container Registry which is the equivalent of Docker Hub. So if you are not familiar with Docker Hub, let us go ahead and see what is this ECR and why you need that. Assume a scenario like this, you are a developer and you have a Docker image and you want to run the Docker image into a container management system or a cluster. In Amazon terms, it is an elastic container service. So you have a simple image and you need to run it in the cluster. So how does the workflow happen? So as a developer, you basically create the image and you push that image into a registry. In this case, it's your EC2 container registry. And then once you push this, this image can be used or pulled by other people or your deployment team or your ops team to run it into a cluster. So the ops team comes in and says, you have a service and under that service, there are certain tasks that needs to be run. And this is the definition document and you give this document to your ECS cluster. And this cluster, what it's going to do is, is going to start the service. When it is going to start it, it will pull the latest image from the ECR and it is going to start the services and give you a health check. So in short, what ECR offers you is a registry which will have multiple repositories where all those teams can upload their latest versions. For example, your platform team will have provide you with a secure operating systems and your application teams will provide the images for their libraries and applications. And once you upload them, you can have policies which are tied to your IAM policy saying who can access that image and what privileges they will have that on that image. For example, team A's developers will not have access to images created and built by team B and likewise images created by SecOps team will not be deleted by other team. So you can have all these kind of different policies applicable on your ECR and finally the images itself you can have the images tag them saying this is for production image, this is for test image. Finally the ECR also provides an easy way of pushing and pulling images through an authorization token. So you can have your teams collaborating with other partners and making them push images or pull images from your ECR itself. That is where authorization token comes into picture. So if I look at it a little bit more in detail, how the team collaboration happens, I create an ECR registry and then say two teams are having their own web apps. So instead of avoiding a overlap, so you create two registries, that is team A will have its own registry and you will have web app under that and team B will have their own registry and under that they can have their own web app and all of them are completely isolated so that each of the workflows are independent and not overlapping the other team operations. So if I look in deeper into the access control mechanism, on the left hand side you have a developer who is going to push images. So the policy for that person will be looking like they will have put image privileges, initiate layer upload that is your particular layer that has been defined by the latest version of code that has been committed and then you can modify a particular layer alone and then you get an authorization token for pushing, pulling or removing those layers. Whereas when you are coming to the instance which is going to run this image, it will have only the set of privileges that you see on the screen. It doesn't need to have more privileges. So you can completely isolate what privileges a developer has and what privileges an EC2 machine has or your other teams have. So very fine grained access control mechanism is possible with your ECR. You should also know that ECR natively supports encryption. When a developer pushes a Docker image into ECR, the entire traffic is encrypted through HTTPS. You should notice that there is an S3 bucket shown here. The reason for that is ECR stores all your images into an S3 bucket and natively these images are encrypted using your KMS keys. So once you create your first repository and start pushing your image and go to your KMS dashboard, you will see the Amazon ECR KMS key that has been created and all your images are natively encrypted and stored there. So this ensures that your images are secure at all points and you are having a very secure place to store your images and you can confidently use them in your production environment. So here are some best practices that you need to follow when you are using ECR. The first thing is bring only what you need because your operating system that is a runtime will have certain libraries so you don't need to package them into your container image itself. You can leverage what your operating system provides or your base layer provides. And likewise when you are compiling some code you might need some additional dependencies or libraries but post compilation you don't need them. So you can separate your build time containers and runtime containers and push only the runtime containers into the ECR with the appropriate tags so only the lean image goes into your production deployments. 
and when you're talking about lean image you should reduce your layers so that you can launch more services and more tasks in a very short time and you release more features into the market the other important thing when you're talking about ecr is you need to tag your images so that it makes sense when you're looking at them after some point in time so because every commit is going to create an image build up a lot of images over a period of time to make a meaningful sense of how many images are there on which image is being launched into production which image is still in dev environment you need to tag them use any of the tagging mechanism shown here you can use a semantic version as shown here as like 1.1.1 which is relevant to your development code or you can also use the git commit code or the basic simple mechanism as build numbers or build ids to avoid the very common terms like latest and stable because you don't know what stable is pointing to this is another alias you can have along with semantic version or a git sha but only having latest and stable is going to cause a confusion which one is it is pointing to and it makes it easier for you to roll back say for example if you're at version 1 and you're deploying version 2 and the latest version is having some problems you know where to point back to the rollback you say just say that version 1 is your rollback version and then your cluster should take care of that automatically some more set of best practices make sure you're using build caches because when you are building it in the same docker host the build caches will ensure that your build times are considerably smaller because you're not pulling them every time and the build happens incrementally from the existing layers itself. By reducing the build time, what you also do is you're allowing your developers to commit more code and more features it goes into your production environment. Reduce your build size images and number of layers. Docker allows you to chain your commands so that the number of layers that get created into your Docker environment or Docker image gets smaller and then it is more easier to manage and you can roll back faster as well try to have your build and deployment environment in the same region because every time you're pushing a gigabyte images from one region to another region you are going to pay for bandwidth on both the sites and your cluster is going to be in a different region then your ECR is going to push the images to the deployment environment again so you will be paying unnecessarily for bandwidth and it is going to increase your latencies and the time required for your developers to push and pull images in the next videos we are going to see how to create an ecr and push a simple image into your ecr thanks for watching happy learning